Hey everyone, and welcome back to this class, Data Science, Deep Learning in Python, Part 1. In this lecture, we are going to talk about what it means to train a neural network and introduce some of the basic ideas we're going to develop in the next few lectures. First, let's remind ourselves of the general outline of this course. The previous section of this course taught you how to make a prediction using a neural network. So given some input, how do you find the neural network's output? Of course, we discovered that those predictions didn't make any sense because the weights of the neural network were just random. In this lecture, we are going to answer the question, how do we find what these weights should actually be? For those of you who are familiar with scikit-learn, here's another perspective. You know that a supervised machine learning model in scikit-learn has two primary functions, fit xy and predict x. Fit is for training the model, and predict is for making new predictions using the trained model. So in some sense, what we've done in this course is backwards because we discuss prediction before we discuss training. But in real life, you would have to train the neural network before making any meaningful predictions. Of course, practically speaking, it's obvious why we want to do this, because training is difficult, whereas making predictions is relatively easy. But not only that, you'll see that training actually requires us to know how to make predictions in the first place. So basically what we're saying is, the previous section of this course talked about what would go inside the predict function, and this section is all about what goes inside the fit function. And as we discussed previously, this involves finding the right weights for the neural network. At this point, I want to make something very clear, which is a common misconception among students who are new to deep learning. While backpropagation is the name we give to neural network training, it is not a special algorithm. In fact, it's very basic, and it doesn't require any new concepts other than what you already know from linear regression and logistic regression. Let me repeat that. When you learn about backpropagation, you're not learning about some new special algorithm. We are just doing the exact same thing that we did to train linear regression and logistic regression. So what is this method that we use to train linear regression and logistic regression? Let's recap the steps. And by the way, if you're new to machine learning, then you want to be very familiar with these steps, since these are the steps that you will follow in pretty much every machine learning model you learn about. So step number one is to define a loss function, also known as a cost function or an objective function. As discussed earlier, like any good businessman, your job is to minimize your cost. So step number two is to actually minimize the cost. You can do this by finding out which weights, let's just call them W for now, lead to the lowest cost. The question now is, how do we minimize L with respect to the weights W? As usual, we turn to our old friend calculus. Whenever you want to minimize or maximize a function, you take its derivative, or its gradient, with respect to W, and set it equal to zero. Then you solve for W. This makes sense because, as you can see, at a minimum or a maximum, the slope is zero. Of course, in most cases, it's not possible to solve for W algebraically, so we have to use a method called gradient descent. Basically, this involves finding the gradient of L with respect to W, and then taking small steps in that direction over and over again until the loss L converges to its minimum value. We call eta the learning rate, and it defines the step size for each iteration of gradient descent. Now, if you're not convinced that this procedure works, you can check out my gradient descent tutorial to try it out for yourself. But ideally, you already know how this works for linear regression and logistic regression, so it should not be a problem conceptually. One common point of confusion among students is the difference between gradient descent and gradient ascent. Sometimes it's more convenient to use one or the other, but it's important to realize that they are exactly the same and yield the same answer. For example, if I have some loss L that I want to minimize, then it's possible for me to define some objective J that I want to maximize, 
which is just the negative of L. To maximize J, I can do gradient ascent rather than gradient descent, but both of these will give me the exact same answer. To prove to yourself that this works, consider the function x squared, which has a minimum. Now suppose I flip it around so I have negative x squared. You'll notice that the minimum of x squared and the maximum of negative x squared are at the same location, x equals zero. But not only that, whether you do gradient ascent or gradient descent, the update equations are exactly the same. Therefore, while they have different names and are conceptually different, mathematically you're using the exact same equation, just with the negative sign in a different place. As a last note for this lecture, I want to address another common mistake, which is to assume that this method only applies to feed-forward neural networks. Again, this is not the case because, as I mentioned earlier, this same algorithm applies to all deep learning models and even some non-deep learning models as well. So we always take the gradient and then take small steps in the direction of the gradient. It doesn't matter how advanced you get in deep learning, whether that's convolutional neural networks, recurrent neural networks, or any other fancy new neural network that's been invented recently. We always use this method. It's just gradient descent. It happens to have a fancy name, which is backpropagation, but realize that it's just the name that's fancy, not any of the technical details.